What I'd like to show you in this video is a great way of almost misusing the Beats warp mode to tighten up uh, extra loops which you might have chucked in over the top of your uh, any, any MIDI drums that you might have written. So I'm just going to solo my drum group in this uh, piece of music that I'm writing. So there's three elements in the drum group. There is my drum rack, where I've programmed some drums myself. And then there's a tambourine loop and a bongo loop. Just let me double click on the tambourine and let's take a look at clip view. Now if you look at the sample box you can see that I'm in beats mode here and by default beats mode will have this mode activated which is loop forwards and loop backwards. Basically the way beats mode works is that every, well providing you've got preserved transients selected here, Every time you see a transient marker like that, like that, like that, the audio between two transient markers is sort of sliced up. So you end up with a big load of slices. So there's one slice, two slice, three slice, four slice, and so on and so forth. And when you slow a piece of audio down away from its original beats per minute, so you can see that um, Live has estimated that the original beats per minute of this clip is about 125, 126, and I'm playing at 124. So what happens then is the tempo of the slice is preserved, but the gap in between two slices is, well, a gap becomes apparent. So you'll hear a break in the audio unless you've got one of these loop modes on. So that's loop forwards and that's loop backwards. So let's just um, have a listen to see how these sound. I'm just going to accentuate this just by slowing the tempo down gradually. So that's loop forwards. Let's see what loop forwards and backwards is like. So what do we mean by loop forwards and loop backwards and forwards? Well, what happens is as live comes to the end of the slice, it just moves back a little bit and it repeats the last little bit of the slice in a loop before it reaches the next slice. In other words, it fills the gap for you. However, there's a third mode, play the slice once and stop. Now, if we listen to how this sounds, so this is the loop at roughly its original beats per minute, no gaps. But as we start to slow it down, you can now hear the gap that's happening in between each slice. Now at the moment this sounds a little bit unnatural, but we can use this to our advantage. So this control is a volume decay envelope. Now at values of 100, there will be no volume decay over the course of the slice being played. We'll stay at full volume, bang, and that's why we hear a sort of click or a gap in between the different slices. At zero, a volume envelope, a decay envelope, is imposed on the slice and it will die away to zero level really quickly. But just to show you perhaps with a clip envelope, We'll get that sort of effect happening. So that would be values towards 
zero, that would be values towards 100. So let's have a listen to see what happens as I start to play around with this control. Now in the case of a tambourine, in between the really obvious transients, where the tambourine's obviously been perhaps hit against the part of somebody's hand, the, the rest of the sound um, has quite a lot of sustain on it. It's filling quite a lot of um, the frequency spectrum and it's taking up quite a lot of space in the mix. Now in this case, I'd probably use this volume envelope just to rein it in a little bit so the transients poke through but so you're not taking up the whole of the, the mix with tambourine. It's the same with the bongos. Um, let's just have a listen to, to the bongos. So you can see I've already pulled the, uh, the volume envelope back to 57. Let's put it back on 100 and have a listen. So you can see this hit here, this hit here have quite a lot of sustain on them. Again, filling a fair bit of the, the mix up. So if I just pull that back a little bit, you can hear there's a much quicker decay on that sound now. And it's almost as if the transients have been accentuated a little bit. It's behaving like a little bit of a transient designer. So let me hit, um, play the entire drum subgroup. First of all, let's have no volume decay on the sounds. And then I've pulled the, uh, the volume decay envelope back a little bit and you can hear there's much more room in the mix now for the other elements of my track. So that's how you can use beat mode on loops to tighten them up, get them to sit a little bit easier, a little bit better in the mix.